What's going on guys, this is Apple Fox channel here and apparently this time I'm gonna be talking about the iPad and in today's video I'm gonna be showing you the iPad tips and tricks that I thought that would be interesting for you. I mean it won't be in any specific category as I already made a video about the tips and tricks for the keyboard, it's just gonna be tips and tricks for the iOS 11 on the iPad. Let's get started. Let's start with the very first feature right now. And I know that many people use the iPad because of its large screen and they use it to read articles online and some news, maybe books and stuff like that. And most of the time they often use Safari for that. And because most iPads are not cellular compatible, I mean, you can only use Wi-Fi for them and you don't always have Wi-Fi. And that means that you want the articles to be offline accessible. So you need to save it somewhere. And if you don't want to mess around with the screenshots, then you have to do this. So first of all, you open up Safari and as you can see, this is the CNN website. And let's say that you are reading this, you want to save it in order for you to read it offline. So what you have to do now is click on this like share icon at the top. It is this one right here and you have to swipe right. And here's this icon that says create PDF. So click on it if you want to proceed. And as you can see, this is a PDF file of this website. So it is pretty much the, the website that you are looking at with, with the difference that now it is a PDF. It is not on the internet. And here, click again on this share icon at the top. And here you have the option to save it to your iBooks, which is probably the thing that I would recommend you to do because it is the most comfortable thing to do. So click on the, uh, on the iBooks icon right here and the book or the page has been saved to your iBooks. And here we are inside of the iBooks. And when I click on it, you can see that this is a page that I have just saved. At the top, you can see that the title is Safari December 30. 2017 at 4 p.m. and it is of course the time and the date when it was created so you can double tap on it and it is like a website so you can read stuff offline even if you don't have the connection to the internet so it is really great people that use ios products or like ios devices know that if you want to move those applications or if you want to change the position of them you need to hold down to them you need to wait until they start to shake and then you can start to move them and in the iOS 11 on the iPad, it is actually quite different. Of course, you are able to move those applications around if you want to. So you can create a folder just like you would normally do. But what's different is that, let me show you right now. If you want to move those application, when you hold down to it, you don't have to wait until they start to shake and until the X actually appears. You can move it right away. So it is really simple. You just grab it and you move it. So it works really well. I think it has to do something with the drag and drop. It works really nice in my opinion because you don't have to wait until they start to shake because it takes a couple of seconds, you know. But for example, if I hold down to this iBook app, you can see that I can move it around. But if I click on this icon, you can see that I am inside of another application with the window floating. Right now I have the option to let it go and use the iBooks just like it is right now. Or I can swipe up or swipe down right here and it is like separated the screen into two sections. So this is also something that not many people are familiar with on the iOS 11 running on the iPad. But in terms of the icons, you can move a couple of icons at once, but for this you need to wait until they start to shake basically. So you have to go like this and now when I tap on this app and this app, you can see that I can move them around at once. And if I let it go, this is how they end up. I don't really use iPad camera that much, you know, like it is a good camera. It is pretty much the very same one as the one on the iPhone 6, but the screen is so huge and I don't really use it that much because it looks kind of funny and ridiculous when I'm like holding my iPads in my hands trying to take a photo or record a video, but there is one thing that you can use the iPad camera for and it is really great. So let me show you what it is basically. We have the option to read QR codes right on the iPad. So let me just bring it right here. You can see that it shows me what it actually is inside that QR code. So it actually says hello and with the smiley face behind it. But anyways, uh, every QR code is different and the ability for the iPad to actually read it is really great because you don't have to download any kind of additional software, any kind of other apps. You can do it right inside your camera. You can even click on this option at the top or you can swipe down on it. And as you can see, you can you have some other options here as well. And as you can see, it says hello, as I already mentioned, but you can also search web or copy it. So it is really nice and many QR codes actually have the, the websites or the URL sites hidden within them so you can enter the website right away. The next tip that I think it is really useful is this right here. So as you can see it is a keyboard but 
What is really interesting about it is that if I swipe down on the individual key, you can see that the character that is above it actually shows up. So if I tap on this, you can see that we have this too. And if I keep doing this kind of stuff, you can see that it looks really nice and not only it is nice, but it is really useful. So you can actually flick the keyboard or I'm not sure how Apple calls it, but I think it is the flick keyboard. The reason that it works so well is because the iPad screen is really big and you have space to actually swipe down on one individual key. And the last but not least tip for your iPad has to do something with the maps. I mean, most of the time you want to zoom in and you don't have to pinch anymore. You don't have to do it like this. What you can do and it, what is actually a lot more comfortable to do in my opinion is to double tap with the finger right here and swipe up or down depending if you want to zoom in or out. So it is really useful as you can see. And that's it guys, that is the end of this video. I want to say thank you so much for watching until the end and I just really hope that I could help you with your iPad and if you enjoyed this video then definitely smash that subscribe button because you're gonna be able to see similar videos like this one in the future on this channel so make sure you don't miss it. And I also wish you all the best in the new year of 2018. So happy new year to everybody. Have a nice day and see you in the next one.